Hey guys, it's Lady V and I'm back with round two of Tribe Gaming versus Team Queso. Now this was the showcase war that was featured in Gamergy in Madrid, Spain. So you're gonna get to see more 12v12 triples that came through from that starting now. Now round two of this match went to Tribe Gaming with a one star win. You can see here 13 to 14 and this man Tribe Gaming in round two went four for five with Team Queso going three for five out of their 12v12 hits. And let's take a quick look through at all those successful attacks. So first up, we've got Al Mualan who took out Mutka and you can see here he's got a Sui Lalo setup. But if you'll notice, he's got a skelly spell there and what he's gonna utilize that for is to knock out that queen. With a Sui, you're, you're usually working around the outside of the base to get some defenses, to shape it up a little bit. Um, but most importantly, you're just not looking to necessarily do a push. If you can't access that queen, it's no worries because you can just bring a skelly spell and the rage to get in. Now he gets a very nice value with just a wall break in. He's just using his heroes, a couple of troops to help with the funnel. The wall breaks to set the queen in place, picks up a multi, picks up those 80s. And again, that's great value. But with the queen on the opposite end, he has to figure out the best way to do it. And that's how the skelly spell comes into play. Now the king setting up very nicely here. You're going to see a nice 30% um, kill squad entry, which is great, great value. A lot of times when you're doing those uh, queen charges, you're going to see about 40% or so. Sorry, keeping an eye on what's going on to talk you through it. Now he sets in, once he gets that value, he sets in his Lalo. We've got the freeze to hold off the eagle, the stone slammer coming in to take out that town hall. Once everything was distracted, he was able to drop the skelly spell on top of the queen just hitting the rage uh, but he also has the benefit of the pups to help out with that as well he's created some really nice pathing here everything working together spreading out very well this isn't like our typical lalo pathing that we see where you create that l shape and you're trying to create narrow pathing with these sui type entries you're just going to have a longer push and you have to add in along the way to keep your loons working together and he's got a great amount of value for the cleanup as well with so many loons left over and of course all those minions now next up on the board we've got Rigo so we're doing all team queso first and then we'll, we'll switch over into tribe gaming but Rigo going in with the queen charge hog attack always one of my favorites if you guys know me you know I love my hogs I think I have a couple of tutorials for town hall 10 haven't gotten quite to the town hall 12 level yet but that's because I'm not playing it um, but I'm always happy to do these videos and comment on them. So with his queen charge entry, he helps funnel the queen with that baby dragon. We're going to see the king step in place to also help navigate her. But he gets some early value out of knocking out that king. The one thing I hate worrying about is a king on my hogs at the end. So if you can pick this up along the way, always super valuable in your push. We've got the loon coming in to help pick up any possible bombs, air bombs that might knock out his healers. And also they do a little extra tanking here for the queen. And you can see here, as I said before, that king set in place to help with the funnel. And we're gonna see the queen push into the core with the wall break jump set, freezing up the multi to keep things working. And really scary here <laughs> is that the queen is just on the outside of that wall break, but the CC and multi gonna help push things back in. And again, with that king doing as much work as he possibly can do. Now jump goes a long way here, giving the queen access to the core, to that enemy queen, to the eagle. And this creates very, very easy pathing and not that much left over for his hogs. Already at 43%, well, well past where he needs to be. And we've got the wall wrecker going in. Now this wall wrecker serves great purpose. It goes in, it helps to activate the town hall, though he's pretty close to the percentage on here. Uh, but you can see it hits that wall, hits the town hall, activates it, and he can send his hogs in, right in on the town hall. Early send in like this, you can easily use your Grand Warden Tome to get through and keep everything pushing along, especially when it's working side by side with that queen surgically adding in some hogs here for those defenses that are scattered on the outside works out very well for him as well um and again this core entry i love this i have to note that this queen has gotten a, an amazing amazing push here 
and has helped navigate those hogs through the base as she works alongside and does take on some of the heat of those defenses. Minor that he's kept in his bag just in case there was anything stuck in the core that he needed to get access to and he is fine on the cleanup makes this look so easy now the third and final triple of this round to come in from team queso was from michael taking down danny and he's going in with a queen charge lalo now i have to say i love seeing team queso with these queen charges this particular weekend we had seen some epic epic queen charge work uh some beautiful entries and value from this now he's got his king set to help with that funnel uh, very minimal value with that one minor just getting what he needs because he's out of range of any of those air targeting defenses and with just a single layer wall break this queen gets so much out of it the single layer wall break and a jump leading into the core she's able to pick up that town hall she's able to get into that core get the enemy queen deal with the cc and create pretty solid pathing here for his lalo portion now queen takes a little bit to move into the base you can see hung up but still those jumps last long enough that you can be patient and work through this and all that value that he needs is right there in the core and even knocks out the king one less distraction to worry about nothing really important for a lalo uh, but in the end, sometimes that actually does matter. That king standing up, he could be protecting a podium that's last left over for the cleanup. So always good to take down what you can. Queen unfortunately dying out here before she can knock down the eagle. But because of what he's created already, this paths very smoothly into the base. And he surgically adds his loons in and around to just sweep through and come in. Now minions are down for early cleanup and I cannot stress enough how important that is to have those minions down for cleanup, particularly in these Town Hall 12s. Time is always a factor. You're always working against that clock. So be sure if you're doing Lalos, even if you're doing hogs, no matter what you're doing, get the cleanup down and always try and reserve a troop or two in case you need to drop it somewhere at the end that your units aren't getting to. And so many loons left over. We're seeing a lot of the same. Make this look so easy and absolutely smashing these bases now for tribe gaming first up we've got itsu it's going in with a queen uh queen charge minor sorry i had to take a quick look to see if there was anything to help get the queen into the base on this one uh you do have the jump so that qualifies it as a queen charge it's uh, anytime you're using those healers to push your queen into the base. You're charging her right through, whether it's wall breakers or a jump or a wall wrecker, um, as opposed to a queen walk, which is gonna work around the outside of the base. And we do see those, we see those queen walk miners, uh, but he's getting some great value out of here early on. Now, this is a big trend that we're seeing is these outside Tesla farms. Now, a lot of times we're seeing them hitting these on the back end. But really, it's great when you can pick it up in the beginning because a lot of attacks can die out to leftover back-end Tesla farms. Your, your units are kind of dying out and you're worried about how you're going to contend with it. So if you can catch those early on, which you don't know, you don't know when they're fresh hits, but you can try and assume if you can catch those early on, those are great, great value for your attack. Now gets that queen to jump in, really nice funnel here. And with the king working on the opposite side, you can see super narrow pathing to move these miners in and that's what miners need miners want to spread and it's good to have them spreading out but you don't want them spreading out too thin so if you can keep a nice push going through the base keep the pathing narrow for them i think you can hear my dog squeaking in the background um, if you can keep the pathing narrow for them you get the most out of your spells on this and you're able to encompass all of those miners uh, within each segment now he gets great great push out of this king who's still rounding the corner here from the six o'clock side that he dropped him wrapping around all the way up to just about 12 o'clock and i think we actually see him go a little bit further but the one thing i want to point out is this cheeky loon he held on to and you can see he dropped the heel he wanted to make sure that he got that archer tower down because this was a race to the clock wizard comes in to help with the cleanup but what that loon did was secure it so his wizard could come in unscathed and help with the cleanup in case it came down to a matter of time he would have been fine considering how many units he had left over 
but you never want to risk it. Now, second up, we've got Danny. Now, Danny did something really, really cool here that I liked. Again, in with a, uh, a queen walk minor or a queen charge minor rather. Um, but I really like something that he did kind of in the tail end of this. And uh, we'll go over that in just a second, but you can see the bullers coming in to help with the funnel. Now, bullers are great value for a funnel, uh, not crazy amount of cost, and they can do a lot of work because they because of the bounces themselves. And he's setting up his queen beautifully through here. The king will work on the six o'clock side to help with the funnel, and that wall wrecker is gonna uh, push the queen into the town hall. And again, some great value out of this, shaping up the base nicely and um, eliminating the town hall as a threat, uh, utilizing that queen to knock it out. Now we can see the Pekka is here helping with that final king will be set in place to help out shortly as a queen works her way in. And being very patient while it pulls the CC out. Now a lot of times you worry about those archers coming out of the CC um their serve the purpose of those archers with the lava hound is to actually force an early queen rage the timing worked out nicely that he actually didn't have to force it right away and i think that one was a little bit off uh, off kilter the first one drop that second one but makes that push in and you can see here the king is set for that funneling for the miners here on the opposite end as they work through the base and this is what i really really like is that he's holding holding this last heel he knows he's going to have a choice here where he's going to want to drop it and he gets it right in on this multi-chamber in the core he's following his pack of miners and he knows that there's a possibility of a giant bomb right there past the multi going right into uh the archer tower and AD chamber. Now this is what you really have to pay attention to when you're doing these attacks, seeing where those giant bombs might be, especially when you're going in fresh hit and you only have one hit to go. So nice work here from Danny on that one. And we cannot forget about one of my favorite members here, Eve Maxi, and um, he took out Al Mualin, which I can never say his name right. I'm not gonna say it right ever, probably. Uh, you can correct me in comments if you'd like to tell me how to say it, but we're gonna call him Al. <laughs> so Maxi taking out Al in with the queen charge Lalo, and he's utilizing that wall record to get the, en the entry for the queen into the base, but also has a jump to push her a little bit deeper into the core. Uh, the axis here that he really wants to get, obviously, um, is trying to push up towards that queen you can see here uh, i don't see anything that would take out the queen um I, I i'm not seeing any skelly spells or anything like that so he's going to get a really nice push into the space so drops that poison on the cc and you can see beautiful entry almost doesn't even need this jump at where the queen is situated um, but working through and he's gonna have to be very patient here as the queen moves around the jump is gonna help utilize want to see that uh, town hall go down want to see the queen get this value out of that town hall coming in working on it and then this will help navigate her so he doesn't have to worry about her walking around um, too much and going where he doesn't want her to go it's kind of helps steer things a little bit better so once he knows that the queen is stepping up to the enemy queen he's able to start that lalo portion and we've got very nice narrow pathing i'm always a fan of this narrow pathing uh, for someone who struggles a lot with spell placement i think these are some of the easier i say easier at this level that they're at but i think this is some of the easier way of being able to see where your spells are going if you can calculate what value you're getting out of a kill squad push like this or a queen charge push and you know what's going to be remaining in those defenses it's a little bit easier to know where you're going to place your spells and where those are going to be needed so he's able to use his grand warden tome ability and he's got one haste to kind of sweep through here towards the back end minions again all down for that cleanup early on particularly on some of those storages where you really don't want to leave those for the end a beautiful split here on balloons through the haste getting that split onto those last defenses as they come in and help for cleanup and a nice triple here from Maxi in round two. Now the final triple in from Sebex, we've got a little um, Pekka 
Smash action. Now, we actually didn't see a lot of P.E.K.K.A. Smash, which I've got to say, well, no, I'm not necessarily surprised, but this is a hot strategy. And the nice thing I think about these wars, at least for me, I don't know, I'm curious to know what you guys think, is that we're seeing so much variety. We are seeing Queen Charge Hogs, Queen Charge Miners. Um, we're seeing Sui Lalos. We're seeing those, um, those amazing Electron Sui Hog attacks as well. So creative stuff and a lot of variety here. Uh, and Sebex bringing it back to the P.E.K.K.A. Smash and showing how it still is an OP attack strategy. So he gets a great funnel and entry into the core here as he takes on that corner chamber that's leading into the enemy queen straight into the town hall. And this is gonna be nice navigation through the base, keeping those units working together. The most important thing when you have these P.E.K.K.A. smashes is making sure that you can actually keep most of your bullers safe. I would say through about two thirds of the base. If you can get those, um, those bullers through the core, keep them safe, Get them just about to that back end as long as you're keeping your P.E.K.K.A.s alive and your heroes alive and those healers going strong. You typically wind up with a triple as long as it's not a race to the clock. Now he's got the, um, the P.E.K.K.A.s working together, working on the outside of that base. Again, helps out quite a bit as he has his, uh, his king working up top. Takes a little time to beat through, but still has his P.E.K.K.A.s pushing alongside and the Queen coming up to help work around the outside of the base along with those P.E.K.K.A.s, with the Ice Golem, with those Barbs. And we've got some minions down for cleanup where it counts. You always have to think about that cleanup, where you can drop it, when you can place it, when the defenses aren't targeting on it. You can see a cheeky little Archer dropped up top and another one coming in to help with those storages, those high hit point structures that you do not want to save for last minute holding on to a couple of extra troops as well you can see the three loons always good to have those in the bag in case you need for some defenses for helping to distract or even a loon if you have a storage and you need to get something placed at a certain time before the clock runs out i mean this is all a matter of time we've seen a lot of uh, a lot of successful 12v12 plans fail because of time. So still holding on to the queen ability. This was absolutely smashed. When you get your queen to go all the way through the end of the base, you know this was an OP plan and he gets it done. Those loons coming in to help out with that multi. I love the timing on it. They're able to come in and everything else steps in place to knock it out. Well, that's it for round two, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Leave the comments below. Let me know what you thought about the attacks. What was your favorite strategy to see? Um, what other strategies do you want to see in Town Hall 12? What do you look forward to? We've still got round three to go, and I'll be bringing that shortly. If you aren't subscribed to me, please take the opportunity to click that subscribe button. And always, I love seeing your comments in chat. So please feel free to say hello and tell me what you think. Uh, I think that's about it for now. Until next time, this is Lady B. I'll see you guys later. Bye.